I try my best to keep my desk clean and free of clutter, but it never really lasts long. Neat and tidy doesn't come naturally to me, but you know what they say. They say a cluttered desk means a cluttered mind. Well, I say an empty desk means an empty mind. No, that's not, no. But seriously, as a person who loves having stuff around, squishy stuff, silly stuff, sentimental stuff, I'm making a genuine effort to keep my desk clear of non-essential items. One of the few actually essential items that never leaves its spot is this, my stylus holder. I use it every day and I think it needs an upgrade. So today I'm going to turn it into a donut.
and I love the variety you can find in donuts. Whatever your taste preference is, there's a donut for you. I also like that donuts have their own fascinating history. There are examples of fried dough recipes in ancient Rome and early Native American history, but they probably wouldn't have tasted anything like the donuts we know today. Nearly every culture has its own version of the donut. Italy has the zeppole, in Greece they make lokma, in Peru they make picarones out of squash and sweet potato served with syrup. In Costa Rica they make cream filled donuts called puntarenas. Similarly, the Germans make Berliners. There's a cookbook from 1485 that includes an early recipe for a Berliner, originally called the Kropfen. But the donut as we know it was brought to America in the early 1700s by Dutch settlers. Originally, they were stuffed with nuts, hence the name. The Dutch called them Olikuk, or oil cakes. And the donut continued to evolve, but it didn't become a mainstay of American culture until the 1920s with the advent of the donut machine. Since then, donuts have exploded into their own industry. We have national chains and thousands of independently owned donut shops across America, new crazy flavors of donuts, competitive donuts, donut kings and queens even. And now I've got a delicious little piece of all that right on my desk. <laughs>